welcome to this interactive program with Honourable Shay Yadisa. He is a newly elected member of Oyo State Assembly representing the people of Afijo constituency. Before his election, he was an inner member to the former governor of the state. This shows he has been in government structure for eight years. He is a lawyer by profession, a founding member of Tunde and Adisa Legal Company and Chairman Committee of Foreign Relations and Member Information and Media, amongst others. That's a lot of stuff that you are involved in. Um, what made you go into politics? Well, thank you very much for having me. And um, well, politics, to my mind, is um, a platform. Yeah. Um, I see politics as a means of um, um, reaching out. And um, over the years, I've had the privilege to to serve in government, and I found out that politics, if you like, provides the widest platform to make change. Um, yes, we can all make changes in in our current positions, but if you want broad change, then um, you look for political um, leadership. And um, I felt um, I could make impact. I felt um, in terms of social economic development, um, there was a lot I could offer. And um, that was really one of the driving forces for me to go into um, politics. Um, having been in government, I saw the needs of the people um, firsthand, and I felt um, you know it was not enough to just play, um, if you like, the, the supporting role. Um, politics will give me the leverage to be able to make direct impact, and, and that was what drove me into politics itself. Okay. Um, as a member of the previous government in Oyo State, will you say it was successful? Um, let, let's let's put it this way: um, why why call infrastructure? Every town into all your states, um, into every major city in all your states was dualized. So infrastructure, without a doubt, did very well. In terms of the economy, um, we were ranked um, number 18 in Africa, okay. um, number five in Nigeria. Foreign direct investments came into the state. Yeah. So by, by that standard, it was also successful. If you want to talk about things like education and health, um, the SGB, School Governing Board, is acclaimed to be one of the main successes of that administration. So, I, if I mean, the simple answer is yes, I believe it was successful. And um, if you look at those criteria or so why you have a government, um, I think they've done well. But like you would know, government is a continuum. Yes. Um, it has taken the state to where it can, and there's a new administration there that we are hoping would take the state further. No, that's really good. Um, did the policy of not too young to run help in your quest? Because you're obviously um, very young to be um, running, but do you think this really helped in your quest? I think so. I think it really encouraged a lot of young people. Um, in my state, or your states, we have one of the youngest speakers in Nigeria, okay. right on Rebu Debo Ogundoi. Um, we have um, a member that is about 26 years old. Um, I mean, yes, I'm young, but there are people younger than me. So it really encouraged a lot of us to believe that we can do it. Um, over the years, we've heard, you know, the young people should be given a chance. And yes. I keep saying it, they, they shouldn't just be given a chance because they are young. Yes. But the fact is that they have ideas, they have the energy, they have ex the experience in some cases, and even the exposure to yes. really make a difference. So. Um, it encouraged us, um, but much more than that, I believe a lot of young people actually have things to offer the country and um, our states in general. What challenges did you face um, as a young person with regards to going into politics and being there for so long and being able to achieve what you have? Um, what kind of <laughs> challenges did you have? Well, well it's interesting. I, as I said, I, I my previous role was an appointment. So I wasn't seen as a politician, so to okay. say I was a technocrat in, in politics. Yeah. And so when I finally moved into the political scene, um, one of the main challenges is I think people have lost a lot of trust in politicians. And I know that's across the world. Yes. I, I see it all over the world. I don't, trying to convince the populace becomes a real challenge. You, 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 you're yeah. standing in front of people and you're saying, look, I want to bring a, a politics of development. That is my um, program. That is what I want to do across different sectors. And 
you know, they, they, they find it very hard to believe. Um, and so one of the ways I went around that was actually, you know, showing people, not just telling them. And so if you look at in education, we went as far as giving bags, school books, textbooks, uniforms. Um, and this is before we were elected. Um, and so they saw that, well, and this guy actually means well. We went as far as painting schools, mm -hmm. you know, renovating classrooms. Yeah. Um, in the health sector, we um, had health missions. We treated over 4,000 people for free. Glasses, high knee operations. Yeah. Um, in the youth unemployment sector, we engaged over 100 youth teaching them different skills mm -hmm. and up till now we're still monitoring them with the hope that at the end of one year we will put them into a cooperative and yes. give them some money. So it's a end-to-end -end program we have in terms of giving people um, the, the ability to actually make um, gainful employment for themselves. So yeah. if you look at it, say it was a big challenge because people do not believe politicians, that's the honest truth. Yeah. So we had to if you like, not just tell, but show people that we, we, we mean business. And, and I think um, a lot of politicians um, need to toe that line now. We need to yeah. do more. People need to believe um, in, in, in the politicians that they have elected to represent them. And that's our style. It's the politics of development. And we, we hope in the next four years we'll be able to continue um, as we have started and even improve, improve on that. Okay, definitely. Um, as a chairman of foreign relations yes. for the state, mm -hmm. what can you see that the state needs to make life easier for the people? Well, Oyo State is, is blessed. Oyo State is a very blessed state. It is the largest state in the south of Nigeria um, in terms of land mass. In terms of population, it's just after Lagos. Proximity to Lagos is good, Lagos being the commercial capital. Um, and so your state is strategically located. It is also the gateway between the north and the south. So if you look at it, it has a lot of reasons why um, we expect foreign direct investments to come in. Yeah. Um, as my role as chairman, I, I hope to be able to attract um, a lot of um, foreign investors into Oyo State to see the abundant potential we have in Oyo State. I mean, it is amazing in terms of solid mineral, yeah. um, in terms of um, the workforce. We have an educated workforce um, that is just raring to go. We have, mm -hmm. you know, youth that are looking for opportunities. And so I believe that the state is strategically located. Yes. And we're not just telling investors to come just because yes. uh, we want them to come but because we actually feel there will be advantages for them there will be you know benefits for coming to your state it's a cheaper labor force than Lagos um, with the fast train and the road going into Lagos the proximity is good to Lagos the quality of life I believe it's not as stressful as Lagos mm -hmm. and I believe housing and other costs are cheaper so when you look at it it's just like here London people feel London is a big choke, so they go further out. So your state will offer that, offer that option to, um, to a lot of um, businesses that we want to come. So as foreign um, relations chairman, I hope to really attract investors and foreign partners to come into our state and um, work with us. And the same goes for the diaspora as well. Yes. I, I'm hoping that a lot of people from our state living abroad will consider their state, their home state, as a place to make investments, not just because it's their home state, but because there are advantages they can receive from, from coming there. Uh, what, what other business benefits do you see in the area? I know you've mentioned the proximity. Yes. Um, what other business investments do you see um, as being able to attract people to the region or to even encourage trade? Well, well as I, in, in terms of the uh, human, um, uh, the human resource. Yeah. Oyo State has um, a very young population, mm -hmm. educated. I understand we are, um, if not the highest or second highest after Lagos on yeah. online, you know, and that in itself is is an opportunity. It is. Um, it's a room for service industries. There is nothing wrong with our youths being trained um, to provide services for people all over the world yeah. um, in the telecommunication sector. Um, they could act as, um, you know, people providing call centers, you know, so the, 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 uh, and then when you're now talking about resources, um, I mentioned solid mineral briefly. We have over 30 
different solid minerals um, in all your states. We're talking about tantalite, we're talking about marble, we're talking about gold. These are all opportunities. But the biggest, I think, is still agri. Currently, agri is at just the production level. Okay. That's all we're focusing on, which is a bit of a shame because when you look at agri, it's a long chain. But so far, we've been focusing on the production level. Yeah. There is room in processing, there is room in storage, there is room in packaging, there is room in distribution, there is room in supply chain management. And so it's huge. It's huge. And I think that anybody really looking at oil states, I mean, it's a food basket. It, 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 it has so many potentials. And from Ibad on the capital, um, I'm now talking about Afiju, where I am from, um, it's less than an hour. So, Fiditi, which is an area where I'm from, has a lot of fruits. Mm -hmm. You know, mangoes, oranges, um, you name it. Yeah. The land is, 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 is lovely and, and I just see opportunities everywhere. You know, I could go on and on and on. Or else it is the place to come to. <laughs> Definitely, it yeah. sounds like it. Uh -huh. um, how will you like the new government of Governor Makinde deliver the state in terms of security, youth development and women empowerment? Well, I, I said earlier on, uh, Constitution, um, if I remember correctly, Section 14 talks about um, the primary purpose of government is security of lives and property. Um, the last administration has succeeded in that regard. Um, you know, if anything, that's one of his, the hallmarks of the last administration. Um, the governor this time has started showing that he is taking it as seriously. We've had a security summit and, um, you know, we've had um, a lot of talking security. So, you know, I, I believe that that same, um, uh, if you like, momentum will be kept in security for the good of the whole state. We yeah. cannot have investors or investments without security. It is the foundation of any development. And um, with what we have seen so far, we trust that that, that would improve um, as we go on. In terms of youth development and women, um, just like I said earlier on, that oil state is blessed with these human resources. We need to tap into it. A lot of youth unemployment is causing insecurity, is yes. causing you know, crime and a lot of things like that. And I believe that, again, we, what he has outlined is still early days, but with the plans he has put down, we hope that oil state will, will benefit from, from these plans and you know, oil state will grow. Into, into the state we're all hoping it will become. So yes, it's early days. The plans are being put forward. Um, and, and we hope, it, you know, one thing is to plan, another thing is to execute. So we'll yeah. be watching and, yeah. and supporting in any way we can. So um, what advice do you have for the diaspora communities and people from Oyo State? Well, I think I, I said a little bit about that earlier on, but I'll say it again. Um, you know, Oyo State is a blessed state. I, I say it because I've lived there, I've worked there, and um, it has grown over the years. Yes. When I moved to Oyo State, it was, um, it was a state that people weren't sure what, what next. But right now, the last administration has laid a foundation. And, you know, I agree. Look, you know, I'm not saying come to Oyo State just because. I'm saying there is a business case to be heard there. Really, there is a business case to look into in other states. We have cassava, we have maize, we have um, fruits, we have um, cashew, we have um, soybean, we have, you name it. The, the, the ground is fertile, it's, it's, it's a good place to you know, practice. But for the diaspora, they might not feel interested in production, which is good because we have more than enough people producing. But why don't we bring in small scale industries? Why don't we go into processing some of these mangoes yes. and some of these cassava so that they don't all end up, you know, getting spoiled as we have a lot. We have a lot of wastages in Nigeria um, and in oil states. So why don't we get into the processing side? Why don't we get into the packaging side? Why don't we get into other areas of the um, of the chain? So my my point of view is I'm here to speak to diaspora. Um, I would also be going to some other countries in the same light um, with the hope that, look, 
there are some people, particularly in Oyo State, that are willing and ready to receive you, to come in, yes. to help you, to assist you, to achieve your goals. Because when you're elected, you're elected for everybody, whether they're in diaspora or not. Um, and so we're ready to, you know, help as many people as, you know, contact us. Um, my contact details will be available to really come into Oyo State and invest. It's, 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 uh, yes, people have said insecurity, people have bought. I know there are loads of people making a lot of, you know, um, good progress um, and profits in our state. Um, and if you if you are able to tap into the right channels, I'm sure the diaspora will benefit from it. I, I, I can, you know, say that without any doubt. And we're ready to help them do that. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out to come and Thank speak to us. Much. And we look forward to see what um, will be achieved in the next um, next years. Thank you very much.